Welcome back to the channel, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to part 5 of Alien, the original screenplay. In part 4, we were introduced to a brand new Xenomorph variant that was, hmm, interesting, by comparison to the big chap we all know and love. So if you missed that, or indeed you missed part 1, please do go and check out the links in the description box to find that. But anyway, ladies and gents, let's dive right into it. As the crew gather around, ready to bait the xenomorph, Hunter pipes up. Just keep your finger off the button till the lifeboat is away from the ship, that's all. If you press the button right now, it'll blow the whole nose off the ship. Yeah, thanks for the thought, Hunter, Roby responds. Alright, Roby, we'll be in touch with you on the communicator. Stand aside while we drive it in, then... Shut the hatch, launch the boat, and kablooey, Roby knows the drill. The plan is set. Lure the xenomorph in the lifeboat and blow it up. So Hunter and the captain are back in the ship, stalking the corridors. We've got something on the tracker. It's gotta be it. It's too big for the cat. It, it must have stopped moving. Let's, let's move. Let me go first. You stay behind me. That's an order. But something's caught Hunter's attention. Something dangling. A tentacle. Some saliva. It's the xenomorph. And before the captain can turn round, it's launched itself at Hunter. It's grabbed him. She turns. Hunter! Ah! He's pulled back. The xenomorph, opening its jaws wide, launches its tongue into Hunter, ripping at his flesh. The pain excruciating. The captain turns, runs in with the flamethrower. But the xenomorph, smart, intelligent, it uses Hunter as a human shield. And the captain just burns her friend alive. Hello, hello, standard, standard, Hunter! Roby's alone. So, Roby comes down the corridor, trying to find her friends, her colleagues. And all that's left now is the flamethrower, the motion tracker, and an incessant beep, beep, beep. So now Roby is on the hunt. She goes up into the vents and down a flight of stairs. And she sees something, a big ball of flesh, no, no, wait. Organic, yes, flesh, no. It's her captain, Captain Standard. She's bound in this sack, and all she can say is, Kill me! What, what did it, what did it do to you, I'll... No, look. <laughs> that was Melgonis. It ate Hunter. I'll, I'll, I'll get you out of there. Get you to the auto dock. We see Melconis is slowly eaten by this sack. No good. It, it's eaten too much of me. The captain knows what she wants. Kill me, she repeats. Roby sparks the flamethrower and uses the precious fuel to burn her friend alive. So now it's just Roby. Roby and the cat. She picks it up and puts it in a suitcase. Kitty go bye-bye. What'll it be, Kitty? Here, how, how about some Tacitum 35, 10 kilos of it? This will buy us an island on some nice planet. Roby has a plan. We see her going down to the generator, the engine room. Starts tapping away at the computers. Attention, the computer responds. The cooling units for the star drive engines are not functioning. Engines will overload in 4 minutes 50 seconds. The alarm now goes off, but the ship continues. Attention, engines will overheat and main core will melt in 4 minutes 30 seconds. Roby is running down the corridors now, storming off. 
She has the head, the skeleton of the alien in the derelict. She has a suitcase with a cat and some precious cargo. She runs down a corridor and turns and she sees something. The alien is trying to get through a set of doors. Crap! So she runs off, continues down through the corridors, attempts to lock it in. Attention, engines will overload in four minutes. Damn it! She has to run back. She's got to get to the star drive. She has to stop it. Attention. Engines will overload in 3 minutes 30 seconds. She needs to turn it off quickly. The alien is almost upon her. Attention. Engines will overload in 3 minutes. Computer! I've turned all the cooling units back on. What's wrong? The reaction has proceeded too far. The core has begun to melt. Engines will overload in 2 minutes 35 seconds. She's sweating now. So she makes her way back up to the corridor where the alien was. Attention, engines will overload in 2 minutes. But it's not there. The lifeboat hatch is open. Attention, engines will explode in 90 seconds. Shit, where'd it go? Where'd it go? She's looking around the lifeboat. She can't see it. To the best of her knowledge, the alien is gone. It's on board the ship still, not the lifeboat. She'll jettison off. And she'll be done with it. The xenomorph will just simply blow up. Attention, engines will explode in 60 seconds. Roby sits down, quickly jettisons the lifeboat. We see now... The little ship, the lifeboat, blasting away. And the ship explodes. She gets caught in some of the aftershock, shakes her core. She's sweating still. She turns. There's a hiss. W w what's the problem, Kitty? It's not the cat. It's the alien. And it sits there chomping down on someone's arm. So Roby gently, quietly, and carefully backs off towards a spacesuit and slowly gets inside whilst the xenomorph chomps away. The xenomorph can't get to her. She's closed the door, but it makes its way back to the suitcase with a kitty inside. Picks it up, starts hissing at it. Roby is getting inside the suit. Roby has one last plan. She gets inside, she suits up and puts the helmet on as the xenomorph just smashes around the suitcase and attempt to get the cat out. Roby opens the door holding a spear, a makeshift weapon, launches it at the xenomorph and shouts, try a little of this, bastard. She's pierced it and quickly she runs over, presses a button. Warning, decompression. The xenomorph is pulled off to one side of the ship. Roby tries to hold on for dear life. Everything is being sucked out with the xenomorph. And quickly, there a tentacle wraps around Roby's leg. Ah! But she holds on for dear life. The xenomorph is outside now, and quickly, Roby touches a button and latches the door, slamming it shut. And as the xenomorph floats past the engines, Roby clicks another button. Ram jets. A burst from the ship's engines. And the xenomorph is burned alive. Roby's done it. She survived the terror of the alien. And she leaves a closing log. So, it looks like I'll make it back to the colonies after all. I should be to the frontier in another 250 years or so. And then, with a little luck, the network will pick me up. Incidentally, I did manage to salvage one souvenir out of this whole mess. Poor Yorick here should go at least part way toward proving I'm not a crank. She's got the skeleton head. I wish it was him we'd met in the first place. Things might have turned out different. Come on, Cap. Let's go to sleep. This is Martin Roby, Executive Officer. Last survivor of the commercial vessel Snark.
signing off. Roby and the cat go into cryostasis as the lifeboat hurtles towards the colonies. The end. If you enjoyed this, ladies and gentlemen, please don't forget to leave a thumbs up. Please do leave a comment down below and please do share it. I will compile this together in one long video. Um, and also, hey, look, if you want to support what I do here with the narration work and things like that, uh, because they don't they don't really earn anything, uh, you can chuck in a buck with my PayPal link or Patreon and memberships down below. Cheers. Take care.